welcome to The Mental Traveler. I'm Caro and today I'm going to do some book reviews which I am very excited about because they have to do with one of my favorite franchises ever, Star Wars. I thought that I should do book reviews about the novelization of episodes 1 through 6 but today I'm only going to be talking about The Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith which are also known as the prequels. This will be a video full with spoilers. I also have to warn some of you out there that I, unlike many other people, prefer the prequels over to the originals. And another warning should be that there are actually going to be three book reviews of episodes one through three focusing on Anakin's story arc. And another warning is that I'm a helpless romantic, so the love story between Anakin and Padme is something that really appeals to me. And Padme is one of my favorite characters as well, so I'm probably going to talk a lot about Padme and Anakin. And the reason why I'm saying all of this is because the prequels aren't as well loved as the originals. enjoyed was the fact that while some people believe it's unrealistic for a nine-year-old boy to know as soon as he meets a 14-year-old girl that she's going to be the one he will marry one day, I think that Terry Brooke deals with that well because since a lot of the chapters are from Anakin's point of view, the moment when he meets Padme it's already been established that he's a special boy and it's not that far-fetched that the only human who ever finished the Bunta race and the man who's going to be the chosen one and who has all these prophetic dreams can know as soon as he meets Padme that she will be the one for him forever. But what's really nostalgic for me in The Phantom Menace, whether it's the book or the movie is the fact that once I read this novel that belongs to the Star Wars Expanded Universe and it's called Tatooine's Ghost by Troy Denning and it deals with some events that happened after the return of the Jedi in this novel Princess Leia ends up being stranded in Tatooine and at this point she's still feeling very resentful towards Darth Vader despite the fact that he's her father she resents him and all the evil things that he did but when she's in Tatooine she gets to meet a lot of Anakin's child childhood friends and she finds and reads the diary that Shmi Skywalker wrote when Anakin was a little kid. So Le Princess Leia f discovers this new side to her father before he was Darth Vader and that helps her sort of accept and forgive Anakin. And reading in The Phantom Menace the relationship between Shmi and Anakin or between Anakin and his friends, I like making that connection between the two books. Attack of the Clones by R.A. Salvatore. So there are several things that I enjoy about this book. The first of them is that since it begins before the events we see in the movie, we get to learn, for example, the fact that Shmi Skywalker was very close to her stepson, Owen Lars. And I think it makes sense that when Luke is brought to Owen by Obi-Wan at the end of episode three, it's more natural for Owen to wanna take care of Luke. That's really nice because it means that Luke has now a chance to get a good upbringing. Another thing that I really enjoy is the fact that there are a lot of moments where the story is told from Padme's point of view and we get to see how things stand for her. She's this woman who has always put her career and her duty over everything else. At the start of episode 2 she's at this point in her life where she wants a family. Being a senator and a politician isn't fulfilling her or satisfying her as much as it had in the past and then Anakin conveniently comes along at this moment in her life so it's no wonder why she, the responsible senator, decides to finally throw caution to the winds and follow her heart even though she knows it's very responsible to encourage a relationship with Anakin because he's a Jedi and Jedi aren't allowed to marry. So reading the train of thoughts that led Padme to forget her responsibilities and fall in love with Anakin was a nice thing to find in the book and it adds more depth to her character and I mean who can blame her for falling in love with Anakin at this point I love the John Curfree man that he's and I think it's nice to, when I'm watching the originals to know that Darth Vader at least was this human at one point in his life it's bittersweet to know that he can think back upon those days with Padme when they first began to fall in love 
Another thing that I like is that we get a lot of the deleted scenes that didn't make it to the final cut of Attack of the Clones. We get to see those scenes and how they play out in the book version. Some of these scenes have to deal with Anakin accompanying Padme to her childhood home and he meets her parents and her sister and her nieces and that was really nice as well to have him interact with Padme's family. So I think that R.A. Salvatore did a good job in portraying the love relationship of Padme and Anakin into the book. Revenge of the Sith by Matthew Stover. This is my favorite novelization of all six movies and I think that Matthew Stover did a wonderful job with it. The author really owns the novelization process. While I'm reading the book, I don't feel it's just this movie script with some few added scenes and dialogues that the author invented. He really puts his stamp on it and his writing style is very unique. One example could be that whenever he introduces or reintroduces a character, which he does quite often in the book, it's all very poetic. He wants to let us know and understand where a character is at a certain point in the story before the story moves forward and we get to see the scenes from the movie. For example, take Padme. I'm going to read a little extract from her reintroduction and it's in page 170 from the book. Just so you can all get an idea of what I'm talking about when I'm saying it's all very poetic, these reintroductions. This is Padme Amidala. She's an astonishingly accomplished young woman, who in her short life has been already the youngest ever elected queen of her planet, a daring partition guerrilla, and a measured, articulate and persuasive voice of reason in the Republic Senate. But she is at this moment none of these things. She is Anakin Skywalker's wife. Yet wife is a word too weak to carry the truth of her. Wife is such a small word, such a common word, a word that can come from a downturned mouth with so many petty and pleasant echoes. For Pat Mamidala, saying, I am Anakin Skywalker's wife, is saying neither more nor less than, I am alive. She is more now than Anakin Skywalker's wife. She is the mother of Anakin Skywalker's unborn child. This sort of literary technique happens to most of the characters and it happens to them more than once. And I just want to read another one so you can get an idea of what the author does with Anakin, for example, in this technique. And I'm going to read an extract from page 448. It's just after Darth Vader is born. This is how it feels to be Anakin Skywalker forever. The first dawn of light in your universe brings pain. The light burns you. It will always burn you. Part of you will always lie upon black glass sand besides a lake of fire all flames chew up upon your flesh. But you remember, you remember all of it, that it was all you, is you, only you. You did it, you killed her. You killed her because finally, when you could have saved her, when you could have gone away with her, when you could have been thinking about her, you were thinking about yourself. It is in this blazing moment that you finally understand the trap of the dark side, the final cruelty of the Sith, because now yourself is all you will ever have. This is how it feels to be Anakin Skywalker. Forever. The thing that I really enjoy about Matt Stover's writing is that he puts throughout the book all of these little passages that deal with the dark side and how darkness is so appealing and he's sort of trying to seduce the reader along with Anakin to fall into the dark side. For example, just at the end of the book, the dark is generous and it is patient and it always wins. But in the heart of its strength lies weakness. One long candle is enough to hold it back. Love is more than a candle. Love can ignite the stars. This is my favorite dark passage because throughout the book Anakin is always thinking about how even stars die. So how could he save Padme when she is only a human being? But in the passage we see that love conquers darkness in the end and that's a nice hint at what happens in episode 6 when Luke's love for his father ends up redeeming Anakin and all the evil deeds he committed. I also enjoy the way that the novel is written with this sense of foreboding and foreshadowing. You really get to feel like you're in the eyes of the storm, that something important is going to happen. And another difference between the novel and the movie of Revenge of the Sith is that Matt Stover writes some scenes differently from the way they develop in the movie. For example, when Pat Met tells Anakin that she is pregnant, that turns out a little bit differently. It's darker and also it takes for Palpatine a lot more time to convince Anakin to turn to the dark side. When Anakin tells Mace Window 
who Palpatine really is, that turns out differently as well. And another thing that I really like is that at the start of the book, we get this sort of recap as to what has happened in the years between episode 2 and episode 3. In these years, the Clone Wars have occurred and as the book begins, we get to learn that now Anakin and Obi-Wan are really famous throughout the galaxy. They're the dream team of the Republic who can solve any conflict in the wars. We learn that their friendship has developed and matured and that's even more heartbreaking because we know how the story is going to end. And again, I'm going to read a little extract that deals with the friendship between Obi-Wan and Anakin. It's in page 39. This then is Obi-Wan and Anakin. They are closer than friends, closer than brothers. Though Obi-Wan is 16 standard years, Anakin's elder, they have become men together. Neither can imagine life without the other. The war has forged their two lives into one. They stand alone. Together, they are unstoppable, unbeatable. Anakin and Obi-Wan would never fight each other. They couldn't. They're a team. They're that team. And both of them are sure they will always be. And another detail that I like is the fact that in the book, we get to see that Obi-Wan is really concerned about what's happening with Anakin and he's really looking after him and it added depth to Obi-Wan's character. But one of the things that I'm grateful to the book for is that we really get inside Anakin's head to the events prior to him becoming Darth Vader. In the movie, some of the factors that push him to the dark side aren't emphasized. But here, knowing that Anakin won't get a break in the next 20 years because he's going to be Darth Vader, it's really heartbreaking to read that he was under such a big amount of stress and, and it sort of justifies the final action of him becoming Darth Vader. He is worried sick because of his fear that Padme will die. He is desperately seeking a solution to this which drives him desperate. He has just returned to the capital after months of being away fighting in the Clone Wars and comes home to realize he is going to become a father. He doesn't sleep in order to avoid having more nightmares where his wife dies in childbirth calling out his name. He doesn't eat in days as well. The fact that he knows he is the chosen one makes him feel misunderstood and betrayed by the other Jedi who don't grant him what he wants. It's no big surprise that it was so easy for Palpatine to manipulate him and I even think that Anakin wanted someone to think for him because he was so confused. Moving on, one of the th things that I love best in the novelization of Revenge of the Sith is Anakin Padme's marriage and how it's portrayed. At the start, we get to see that Anakin, the Clone Wars have hardened him but they haven't made him more mature. They've only made him lose this innocence. At the start of the book, he is really nervous to meet Padme again after months of being apart because he fears that she would have gotten bored of waiting for him to come back to her. And another thing that I liked is the fact that the book explains way better than the movie the fact that almost every action or thing that Anakin thinks has to deal with Padme. In the movie, there's this moment where he's really frustrated with the Jedi Council because they will allow him to join the Council but they will not grant him the rank of Master. And maybe some people thought that he was very immature and ungrateful but in the book we see that the main reason behind him wanting to become a master is because by being a master you get access into all of these ancient accounts that the Jedi keep and Anakin is desperately seeking a solution to save Padme from his dreams and he hopes that he will find an answer in these ancient documents that the Jedi keep so when the Jedi refuse to grant him the title of master they are denying him access to a solution to save his wife. Another thing that I like is the fact that politics put a lot of strain on Anakin and Padme's marriage. Padme, we get to see how she's still this very active politician and she wants to promote a motion that will take away Palpatine's powers and Anakin sides with Palpatine I am more intrigued by the characters in the prequels than in the originals because I prefer watching the conflicts they go through over the things that happen to Han, Leia and Luke. In a way, I think that the originals are, are a little bit more childish because a lot of the characters are either black or white, whereas in the prequels they're a little bit more grey. Or, or at least that's the way I feel. And also because though I really enjoy watching Luke's storyline in the originals, I think it's something that we've already seen before. The normal orphan who ends up having this amazing future waiting for him if he just ends up overcoming all of these obstacles. I think that I can find that in Frodo Baggins in Lord of the Rings or even in Harry Potter. Whereas Anakin's is this mixture of Shakespeare's Othello with characteristics of a Byronic hero. The outcome is 
just beautiful story of an anti-hero, tragic hero. I love Darth Vader. I think it's amazing that one of the greatest villains of all times became a villain mostly out of love rather than politics or his lust for power and watching or reading about the love that drove Anakin to become Darth Vader. That's another reason why I prefer the prequels. And also Anakin isn't the typical hero. He has a lot of flaws. He's arrogant, he's stubborn, he's defiant, he's rebellious, but he ends up paying for his mistakes very dearly. And then watching in episodes 5 and 6 his atonement, very to me it's very beautiful. Theirs is a great love story. I had already read the novelizations of episodes 1 through 6, but for this video I reread them and I ended up discovering parallels between Kathy and Heathcliff from Wuthering Heights to Anakin and Padme. I am always concentrating on the fact that Anakin loved Padme so much to the point of obsession that he became Darth Vader, but I never really gave it, it a lot of thought to Padme's love for Anakin. And in this reread, I saw this emphasize on how much she really loves her husband, to the point where she would rather die than live without him, even if that means that she has to abandon her newborn babies. Life without Anakin doesn't have any meaning for her. She was almost as obsessed with Anakin as he was with her. And another thing that I realized in this reread of Revenge of the Sith was I've always wondered what would have happened had Anakin saved Padme from dying in childbirth using the dark side. I realized that had Anakin used the dark side on Padme, maybe she would have ended up being consumed by the dark side and become this evil version of Padme that wouldn't have been the woman that Anakin had fallen for and their love would have ended up being corrupted and twisted. And it also makes me feel even more for Darth Vader to think that he never seeked medical attention to sort of transform himself again into Anakin because now that Padme was dead there was no reason for him to want anyone else to see him or to remember the man who he had once been. And that gives another depth of layer to the character of Darth Vader. I think that Vader didn't mind that he had to suffer all the days of his life by the fact that he had to breathe with a medical aid because he felt it was his atonement and feeling that pain was a sort of reminder of Padme that she had been real, that he had once loved so deeply that it had consumed him. And finally, I think it's really sad that when Anakin was a little boy, he wanted desperately to stop being a slave and become a Jedi or a pilot. But then, even though he does become a Jedi, he becomes a slave to his emotions because he can't master them and ends up becoming a slave to Darth Sidious because once a Padme dies, his mainstream dies along with he doesn't have any will or lust for overthrowing the Emperor and ruling the galaxy. He's just there, he just exists and he carries out his job well, but his heart isn't in it and that's one of the tragedies of Darth Vader. And that's it for today, for these book reviews of the novelizations of Star Wars. Please, please fellow Star Wars fans out there, recommend me any Star Wars novels. In the description box you can find links to the Goodreads pages of the book adaptations of episodes 1 through 3. And thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Caro and I'll see you soon.